Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh. In today's video, we'll learn about how to install it on Windows 10 without the Docker. It's very simple. It's like a 10 minutes process, so you can easily do on your system. So first is you need to go to control panel in programs and feature you will you have to turn on windows feature and the feature you have to enable is windows subsystem for linux let me show you uh, if you have looking like this your or you can say category like this you just have to go to small icons you will see program and features turn windows feature on and off and then just wait for a second you just scroll down so this thing you have to enable, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux. So, and then you have to restart the system. What actually it does, it enables the Linux kernel on your system. Soon we will have the native Linux kernel on Windows uh, with the new updates. But as of now, it's like a limited feature, but it has a lot of things into it. Once this is done, then you have to install Ubuntu from Windows Store. So in Windows Store, there is an app Ubuntu. You have to install that. So what and uh, for this app, the prerequisite your Linux kernel should be. Uh, you can say subsystem should be enabled. So first step is this. So it's mandatory. Once you do it, you have to again restart your system. Once you uh, install it, uh, like everything, then or you can inst uh, restart the system after one and two steps both. So it's not like uh, you have to start restart your system two times. Then you have to install and update pip. So these are the commands which require. Uh, you can say for updating pip. A lot of time you will have the repository like. Uh, uh, error in updating the repository so if you run these three commands and then you update this you won't have any issue as i told you it's a linux like it's ubuntu so you can run any command like give me a you know, python version if i have to check i'll say version and i may get the version also so once you have this then you have to run these two commands one this is to set up an environment variable and then you have to install apache airflow and it's pretty simple so i have already installed it so then uh, you don't need it so like once you do it uh, you don't have to repeat the same steps once this is done we have to do one thing one is we need to initialize the database by default it use a sqlite so you can have your postgre and mysql if it's for production but as it is a local host i'm talking about so we can have the you can say our uh, sqlite edition so you have to just say airflow init db so it initializes the DB and also you need to reinitialize the DB a lot of times whenever there is new DAG into the picture because by default it doesn't refresh itself. Okay, so now it is refreshing, initializing it. It will take a while. Let's wait. Okay, in the meantime, I will show you one more thing. Then you need to run this command also airflow web server hyphen P and then you have to assign the port on which you want to run the airflow. So once you do that let it refresh so once you do that so here let me just control c okay so here uh, what i will do is i will run the same command first let me just make it clear and i will run the same command again so what it will do is it will run the uh, airflow web server It'll take a while these uh, two operations will take around two three minutes so you have to wait for them yeah, you can see airflow is coming. So uh, as it is saying, it will be hosted on this one. So we can check our local host. By default, you will be already logged in as admin so that you can uh, do the user login. Let it restart. It is taking a while. As we can see now, Airflow has initialized this DB. It will take some while. Let it restart the server as well. It's still taking time. Okay, now I think server is up. We can refresh our page. It is taking some time. Let's give it time. Yeah. Now you see, automatically you are logged in as admin users and you will have some sample DAGs. Now the main thing is where you can create the DAG and uh, how those will be mapped to the Airflow. So one feature of this Linux is by default, you have your C drive mapped to it. So give an example, if I say CD dot dot and say LS. So I have this folder, so CD MNT will already have your C drive mapped. So if you do LS, so here you see I am getting like 
this uh, program data program files and the program exit exit file so this is listing me all the c drive files so what i can do is i can create a folder called dag in c drive and place my python script there every five second air, airflow will read this folder and uh, will automatically you can say refresh it so how you have to map this folder is let's go back so give an example so let's say cd dot dot first let us go back dot dot and let us say cd root ls we have airflow cd airflow and we have ls we have our config file so you see airflow dot config file so you have to edit this airflow config file so if you see i have mentioned mnt slash here this is the dag folder so automatically uh, it will map to your c drive if you mention your that folder so you have to say slash mnt slash c slash dag so automatically it is mapped to this folder so once this is done so as i am back to my airflow so i will have my server running so now let us make a simple dag what i will do is i will just copy paste edit this dag will give a name called new sample and i can go back every five seconds it will refresh so you don't have to worry about any changes uh, comes it automatically reflects new sample i'll create this save this so as in ui you can see there is no new sample here so now what i will do is i will initialize the db again here float db initialize it will take some time it's this problem is only with the SQLite version. It's not problem with the the Postgre version. It auto automatically refresh. Let it take a little bit some time. Yeah, yeah. About I think now it is refreshed. Yeah, we if we refresh our airflow now you can see I have this new sample, and the code is pretty much what I have put into new sample. So this is all about like how you can uh, run uh, Airflow on your Windows 10 machine without a Docker. Uh, this will help you a lot. Uh, these are the two reference links which I have, uh, you can say, referred. If you have any question, you can post uh, in the comments and you can reach me on my email ID as well. So in my email ID is, let me just put my contact as well. Contact. Yogesh.mahela. Gmail.com. So you can reach me at uh, my website. Uh, you can see my email ID as well. I hope this will be helpful for you. If you have any question, please uh, feel free to post in the comments. Thank you.